Hey everybody, Trey here. Welcome back to another video. Apologies for the road noise you hear in the background. I am in Dallas this morning. My storm chasing tour season has, has started. Uh, so we are out on the road in Dallas doing some local activities yesterday before heading back to OKC today, doing some more activities before storm chasing ramps up early next week. More on that at a later time. But today we have a severe threat that is going to be taking place in kind of a bimodal distribution. We have two different areas of heightened severe weather risk. The one this morning that is currently ongoing is the slight risk down here in the northern Florida, far southeast Georgia vicinity. We have some storms that are ongoing. We'll touch on those in a second. Those are expected to continue to produce some isolated severe reports here through the uh, really the lunchtime hours before waning going into the afternoon. And then our main severe weather risk, our most potent severe weather risk, is expected to be up in the Ohio, West Virginia area today. Enhanced risk level three out of five within the orange shaded region here. So far eastern Ohio, western West Virginia, far extreme northeastern Kentucky under the gun for the greatest threat for severe weather today in that enhanced risk. Large slight risk level two out of five extends outward from that. All hazards are on the table. Tornado threat is at a 10%, not a 10% hatched, so significant tornadoes, tornadoes are not expected today. But we do have that 10% area there within the enhanced risk. And then a 5% extending from really that enhanced risk area eastward toward parts of uh, western Virginia, much of West Virginia into southwest Pennsylvania. So tornado threat is there today, 5% in the southern mode as well. Damaging wind also going to be a threat in that southern mode, as well as the northern mode, 15% areas in both of those risks. And then large hail, not expecting to be much of an issue today, except for maybe a few sporadic instances of large hail uh, in the 5% brown shaded region here up in Ohio, Kentucky into West Virginia. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Let's take a look at what we're seeing right now couple things to notice here in the southeast this is our ongoing convective line that is going to continue to punch off to the east as we go into the morning hours perhaps some sporadic reports of damaging wind maybe a spin-up tornado or two but that should move off into the Atlantic by the lunchtime hour today or maybe just after uh, and then we will be done with the severe threat for that portion of the risk mainly looking up here to the north lots of showery activity up here across parts of the Midwest that is going to be plaguing this area for much of the day. We have a lot of forcing associated with this system, a lot of warm advection ahead of the surface low, which is trans translating off to the northeast. So we have a lot of showery, perhaps some embedded thunderstorm activity this morning from a large area from the southeast all the way up into the Great Lakes. And again, that is going to stick around for much of the afternoon and is, and is lending some uncertainty into the forecast for destabilization going into the afternoon hours today for that northern risk. Let's go into our current mesoanalysis data. This is our 500 millibar map here. And the character of this trough has changed quite a bit from when it was back here across the southern U.S. a couple days ago. I mean, this has been, this is the last day of our real potent severe weather sequence. Hasn't really lived up to expectations, I would say. The first couple days, Monday and Tuesday, uh, definitely had higher end tornado risks, uh, but did not really materialize uh, for some uh, issues uh, that we'll talk about at a different time. Uh, the trough yesterday's event certainly uh, was a potent one. The squall line and some discrete supercell activity across the southeast as this trough finally translated off to the east. Um, that lot, very potent squall line, lots of significant damaging wind reports yesterday. Tornado threat didn't really materialize as well, but still far from a dud yesterday given a lot of uh, severe wind reports. So that continues today across parts of the southeast. Again, the line has definitely weakened in intensity, so just isolated severe reports down there ahead of the base of this of this trough. This, this kind of uh, very high amplitude, negatively tilted trough here. Excuse my drawing here. I'm in a little bit of an awkward uh, setup here. I'm in our tour van, so uh, having to kind of work to, uh, piecemeal things together here, but uh, wanted to get this video out this morning. So that is the axis of our trough, somewhat negatively tilted, tilted back off to the left. And so we've seen a change in the geometry of this trough in the mid and upper levels. Therefore, we've seen, because this trough is a little bit more negatively tilted, a little bit more of a robust low-level response. This is our current surface imagery, and this is what we're dealing with. That surface low that was kind of nebulous for the first couple days of this severe weather sequence has tightened up quite a bit, a little bit of a more compact surface low, still over a broad area. That, again, is expected to tighten up a little bit and move off to the northeast today, and ahead of that surface low is going to be our main threat across the Ohio, Kentucky, West Virginia corridor. So definitely the uh, features are there for a se severe weather event. Just some uncertainties remain as far as destabilization goes. Let's go into our, into our surface data here. 
I'll refresh this so we have our most up-to-date surface OBS. So here is, again, that surface low, just a bro broad northerly, northwesterly flow, kind of feeding in south uh, or southwesterly flow here in the low levels across the southeast. So just a broad cyclone here, but it definitely has tightened some since our event the last couple days. Uh, you can see here kind of the center of the low right in this vicinity here, a little bit more curvature there, cyclonic curvature in the surface OBS there across southern Indiana, northern Kentucky. So that looks to be where our surface low is centered, nice southerly flow out ahead of this surface low. Uh, our moisture leaves a little bit to be desired perhaps. Uh, we don't see those 60s dew points really in earnest uh, until we get down here to Kentucky. A little bit of a plume there and then really down here to the southeast is where our uh, mid 60s dew points are located. We are expecting to get a little bit of a low 60s plume to advect up here into Ohio so moisture should be fairly decent today. Uh, one positive, I guess, to the cloud cover and some of the showers that are around is that may decrease vertical mixing. We've talked about vertical mixing before. Uh, when you have limited moisture already, you don't want to really want to see vertical mixing. That's when you have strong sunshine, surface heating, heating the surface of the earth that allows the air to rise. But you can also get air to mix downward from above, and that's what we call vertical mixing. When that strong surface heating happens, uh, you can get strong vertical mixing. We don't have really strong surface heating across a widespread area today across uh, the Midwest. So that is expected to keep mixing at bay, and that may actually help dew points stay in the upper 50s to low 60s here instead of cratering a little bit uh, and really making this a marginal severe weather setup. So we should have enough moisture here ahead of this northeastward translating surface low. Uh, and so we should have the favorable ingredients for a severe threat here, at least at the surface, even though at first glance it might not look like all that robust of a setup. A couple of soundings here. This is from Wilmington, Ohio, and you can see we're not even close to ready here as far as destabiliza destabilization goes this morning. This is for the 12Z weather balloon that was sent out from southwest Ohio there in Wilmington. Very limited instability, very saturated profile, probably lots of low clouds here. If we were to go to our visible satellite imagery, you'll probably see why that's the case, and you can see that lots and lots of low clouds here across this region. We do see some breaks in the clouds, and those breaks will probably become a little bit more widespread going into the afternoon, so we should see some surface heating to allow destabilization to build, uh, but right now not a profile, uh, at least thermodynamically, that you'd expect with a significant severe weather event. Looking at, at our kinematics, however, our wind profile, definitely favorable for severe weather. Decently long hodographs, stronger deep layer shear for supercells. A little bit of low-level shear here that is expected to continue into the afternoon as that surface low translates northeast. We have that low-level jet kind of maintaining itself across this region. So we should have uh, some low-level shear to foster that tornado threat, but again, it's all going to depend on the degree of destabilization. Uh, down here to the south, let's take a look here at Nashville to see our kind of upstream air mass, and you can see even upstream at this point, very limited instability, uh, and again, we should get some of this, uh, some destabilization through the afternoon with continued warm advection and continued strong, uh, some, some surface heating uh, in, in pockets here across this region, but uh, we should see instability remain on the limited side here, and our low-level lapse rates as well, very, very uh, limited there. Uh, so if those are able to destabilize and those are able to change and become a little bit more steep, then we would be able to uh, maintain some more robust updrafts with this setup. But right now, this is very, very limited, so we're going to have to rely on those cloud, cloud breaks pretty heavily and perhaps some cold air aloft from the center of the trough and some dry air that's working in on the backside. I might as well show you the upper-level water vapor imagery here, and I'll zoom back out uh, to the continental sector so you can see this a little bit better. Uh, but here is our upper level water vapor, so our moisture in the upper levels of the atmosphere. And you can see this little batch of yellow here uh, coming in behind this low pressure system. That is some drier air that's working its way in. And this is, this is expected to become more widespread across the Ohio Valley region going into the afternoon. And that may also help destabilize things. That might help uh, steepen lapse rates aloft so we can get a little bit of destabilization in here uh, despite somewhat limited breaks in the clouds for surface heating. So that should allow us to get some destabilization in here for a severe threat today. And again, again, the degree of that destabilization is what this setup hinges on because our kinematics are looking pretty good. At least they will look pretty good uh, later on in the afternoon, especially our low-level shear is expected to be fairly strong today. So any more robust updrafts will have that tornado threat uh, with that accompanying them this afternoon. Here is some model data. So this is the 12Z NAM coming in hot off the press as we speak this morning. Here is our trough um, organized, pr uh, as you see here, negatively tilted trough, strong jet streak rounding the base of that trough. As we go into the afternoon, that's going to continue to shift off to the east. We'll be right ahead in the left exit region of that trough here if we were to split this up 
into our exit regions here. We're in our left exit region up here um, in this particular setup across the Ohio Valley region. Uh, so our, our kinematics, our, our dynamics are definitely there for a severe threat. Plenty of forcing for ascent uh, to continue storm development this afternoon. And again, that is kind of what is uh, allowing these uh, showers and storms to continue this morning and which may hamper destabilization later on. But let's go down to the surface, see how our surface pattern looks. Um, we'll kind of zoom in here to our Midwest sector so you can see here. Uh, so this is our current look, kind of a drawn out surface level. And you know what, actually I'm going to go back to our continental uh, U.S. sector uh, just so you can see the whole thing. So again, a fairly broad surface low has tightened some since yesterday. That will continue to move off to the northeast, tighten maybe a little bit, become a little bit more consolidated this afternoon. This is at 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time, 5 p.m. Eastern. And right ahead of that, again, nice southeasterly flow feeding into that uh, surface low. We have, again, that little bit of a plume of slightly enhanced moisture here across e uh, eastern Kentucky, eastern Ohio, western West Virginia. Uh, and so that will be our favorite corridor right ahead of the surface low for a severe threat this afternoon. Let's look at our dew points. So you can see that little bit of a plume of 60s dew points, the blue colors there feeding up into the uh, Midwest. It does kind of wane as we go into the uh, evening hours as the surface low really makes its translation off to the northeast. I'll zoom in here just a little bit so you can see that. And you can see it comes off, comes from the southeast, those low 60s dew points. Again, I think vertical mixing is going to remain fairly limited this afternoon. So that will not allow dew points to really crater all that much. So we should maintain ourselves in the upper 50s to low 60s across this region, which is plenty of moisture with the dynamics at play for a severe threat up here. Um, although, you know, with these really high end events across this region, you'd like to see a little bit higher moisture uh, making its way in, but still plenty of moisture for a severe threat. Let's take a look here just ahead of the surface low for a, uh, a sounding or two. So we'll take one here, southeast Ohio, um, and then we'll take one here kind of just down here, far uh, eastern Kentucky, just to get an idea of what the environment is looking like across the entirety of the risk area up there. So this is Ohio, and you can see here the 12Z NAM, which often is a little bit more robust with destabilization, and this is at 4 p.m. Central Daylight Time, 5 p.m. Eastern. Very, very limited instability here. Saturated profile throughout the atmosphere, indicative of a lot of thick cloud cover. Not really all that favorable for convective development. Deep layer shear, plenty of deep layer shear for supercells. Limited low level shear in this particular run. We were seeing a lot of runs uh, previous to this, um, indicating a lot of low level shear here for that tornado threat. Down here to the south, a little bit better instability, but still very much on the weak side. Not all that favorable wind profiles for severe storms. So the NAM has definitely backed off here with our severe threat. Let's take a sounding at 0Z, 7 p.m. from kind of the Ohio, West Virginia border, just to see what our, our soundings are looking like there a little bit later on. So this is gonna be at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Just not all that favorable. Convective contamination here, so a little bit tough to tell. Let's look at the wrap. Uh, just to get another model here, the NAM, as we've we, as you've seen before in some of my videos, is somewhat frustrating at times, uh, as it can be a little bit wonky with the wind profiles and especially the thermodynamics. A um, little bit high, too high of moisture here. I don't think we'll be seeing uh, mid 60s dew points making it up into this region, and the wrap does have a tendency to undermix the environment. But here we are on the wrap, and yeah, the wrap has definitely backed off here a little bit this morning with the overall setup up here. Just not seeing all that much of a really robust threat. It looks like the low-level jet may be a little bit displaced off to the east. Uh, you can see the main plume here over the uh, mid-Atlantic states. Uh, let's take a look and see what the NAM has for the uh, 18Z or the 12Z um, on the 12Z model looking here at the low-level jet. So the low-level jet here, this is at 18Z. Let's take a sounding here, 18Z, southeast Ohio to see if it has a little bit better profiles. So it looks like, at least with the latest model runs, which is a little bit different from previous model runs, yeah, so that you can see the low-level shear much stronger here at this point across this region. This is at uh, 2 p.m. Eastern, uh, but the instability just not at all there. So it looks like we're gonna have a little bit trouble phasing the overall um, set up overall kinematics and thermodynamics here. Once the thermo thermodynamics get pretty good across this region, the stronger low-level shear will have moved off to the east. A couple days ago, this was not looking to be the case. We were looking to see strong, uh, uh, a decent overlap between the decent thermodynamics and the stronger kinematics there. So uh, definitely an interesting development with the models. Good for the folks up here in Ohio. Uh, but still, I, I do think the meteorology is there to foster some storms. Again, these are just models. These are just estimates of what the, the atmosphere might look like later on. 
So the meteorology is certainly there to foster a severe threat. Uh, not sure about uh, the tornado, th tornado threat possibly being as high as it once was. Uh, we may you know, be seeing a downgrade in future outlooks if this trend continues, but overall, we should have uh, plenty of forcing for convection, some destabilization given the dry slot moving in, some breaks in the clouds later this afternoon, and at least some low-level and deep-layer shear for supercells that should foster somewhat of a tornado threat uh, going into this afternoon. So. Uh, definitely keep your eye out, keep your eyes out. Despite this model data, should be uh, definitely downtrending a little bit uh, since our our previous runs. Let's look at some convection allowing model data here. So this is the 12ZH triple R, and you can see what's going on right now. Just a lot of cluttered popcorn type convection here across the region, and again, that is expected to continue into the afternoon hours. This is uh, going to be right around lunchtime. Plenty of showers and storms here, uh, probably continuing to sap instability. Uh, but as we go into the afternoon, you see a, a few more robust updrafts develop there right along the West Virginia, Kentucky, I, Ohio borders there. Uh, but it is a little bit on the messy side, given a lot of forcing with this setup. So not really a ton of discrete updrafts here. If we can get more discrete updrafts uh, in that favorable overlap between de destabilization and kinematics, then we could see that tornado threat materialize. But this is just not all that favorable of a solution for a robust severe threat. But we do see some more robust uh, updrafts in here, and those could produce that damaging wind and large uh, and tornado threat, excuse me. Um, so that's the HRRR model. This is at 8 p.m., still kind of messy convection, plenty of storms to go around. Um, so definitely uh, not all that favorable of a setup for significant severe weather. Here is our NSSL WERF model. It is far enough out for us to take a look, and you can see just a lot of showery activity through the day. Some more robust robust updrafts in here, eastern Ohio, western West Virginia. Uh, so that's going to be our favorite corridor, but again, I think we, we might be having a little bit of trouble today with the destabilization uh, and kinematic overlap there. So I don't think we're going to be seeing a super robust event here uh, today across this region, but the SPC uh, definitely for now thinks otherwise, and we could see some, uh, some downtrends here in later outlooks, but for now we have that enhanced risk across the eastern Ohio, uh, western West Virginia, far northeast Kentucky corridor with a slight risk sur surrounding that. All hazards are on the table. Tornado threat is there at a 10% currently, and that's kind of about in the right spot where the tornado threat would be most enhanced there. But again, I think we're going to have some drawbacks to a, an overall a more widespread tornado event with this setup, 5% extending out from that. We also see uh, some damaging wind uh, gusts. We also could see some damaging wind gusts with these storms up here in the uh, Ohio Valley region. Uh, and also down here with the uh, impending squall line across northern Florida. That will continue into the uh, late morning, early afternoon hours. And large hail, not too much of a threat today given the messy mode and, and weak destabilization. Um, so tornadoes and damaging winds certainly the main threats today in both of these risk areas. But overall, I don't think we're going to be seeing a super robust setup really in either area uh, for a severe threat. We can take a look at the um, southern sector just a little bit, and I, I suspect that our instability is going to be a little bit on the weaker side, maybe 500 joules per kilogram mixed layer cape there. Uh, but kinematics certainly probably are, are pretty strong down there. Yeah, 400, 500 meters square per second squared effective storm relative velocity. But given the overall storm mode being very much messy, very linear, would expect that we would see mostly uh, a damaging wind and maybe a spin-up tornado or two out across northern Florida going into the late morning and early afternoon hours. So uh, bimodal setup today, this is going to end this current sequence of severe weather. It's been definitely an active sequence of severe weather. Uh, and then we'll look forward to next week, uh, next week, early next week. Not going to talk about this right now as we have our, our impending severe weather event to deal with, but we do have a couple of days next week, Monday and Tuesday in particular, that the SBC has highlighted significant, possibly significant severe weather risks on. Yesterday they put out a, 60, a day 6 30% risk, which is equivalent to an enhanced risk across western Oklahoma. They've expanded that into southern Kansas and northwest Texas, so a broad area within this 30% region here for day 5, Monday, April 15th. Uh, and they, the verbiage they're using is that a significant severe weather uh, epi episode is possible, including all possibly significant hazards. So keep an eye out for more updates on that in the coming days. But for now, we're, we'll keep our eyes on our current severe threat. But just know that Monday and then eventually Tuesday across parts of the Midwest and Southeast, Mid-South, uh, could foster that uh, two-day, multi-day severe threat, especially on Monday, looking to be pretty significant. So with that, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.